Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and wow, 22 years, that's right, 22 years since our legendary late night talk show host, Jay Leno, yep, the man with the long chin, has left us for good on The Tonight Show. Such a shame, though, that another great icon has long moved on to better future projects in his career. To a, a no talent hack who came from Saturday Night Live known as Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, NBC must have been laughing their heads off when they chose this bastard. Because I'll tell you this though, he is not funny. Not funny at all. Just your typical unfunny clown that tends to ruin almost everybody's experience. Yep, I saw that awful film of his back in 2004, and while wow, 10 years ago too, with Queen Latifah called Taxi, and you could tell how awful this guy really is. If you haven't seen it though, my best is to stay away from it. It's a piece of shit. Maybe I might review that someday too, this, the tear down Fallen in his ridiculous movie that he was in. Well, well, it's very sad because I was lucky enough to watch his last show. He did a final farewell musical number with Billy Crystal and all the rest. Although I do hate Kim Kardashian though. <laughs> Why did they have to throw her in this one? It should have been Chris and Chenoweth, though. Or Idina Menzel instead. After all, you know, they were on the show. Anyway. And I, I gotta say, I did feel sorry for him, too. Yeah, he even did cry during his last moments. You know, when he was making his speech. You, know, you could tell he was really sad to leave. Yeah. NBC really is nothing but a joke. You know, as I would say it, it's nothing but crap. Ever since, Comcast have totally ruined what it was once a good network. But then again, you know, it suffered enough already when Universal joined in the league. You know. Anyway, Prior to his departure on The Tonight Show, I'm going to be reviewing a film that, believe it or not, Leno himself had disowned completely. It was a film that was made, that was supposed to be released in 1989, because it was made from that year, but it's completely sat on the shelf for a few years until 1992, when HBO finally got a home video release of the movie before they wound up having a premiere on HBO in November. Mostly because Dino De Laurentiis' production company was having some bankruptcy problems. You know, De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, that is. Or Dave for short. <laughs> so it's a film that I would say is a pre rush hour film of all buddy cop movies called Collision Course. That's right, Collision Course. And I gotta say, it wasn't as bad as I thought. In fact, it was a decent uh, buddy cop picture. I didn't think it wasn't, you know, as bad as Leno had said, but I could even tell he didn't want to be associated in, with it. But I could take it for granted. But it has a great cast, though, prior to that, and it even has Pat Morita in it, too, from The Karate Kid, and Ms. Miyagi. So I'm going to give it a try to do my review. So anyway, it stars Jay Leno, <laughs> yeah. along with Nobuyuki Pat Morita, best known as Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid series, yeah. Chris Sarandon from the original Fright Night, along with The Princess Bride and Child's Play, Tom Noonan from Manhunter, 
Randall Tex Cobb, who's been in some other stuff. Yep. <laughs> that also includes uh, movies like Ace Ventura, Peck Detective, Brian Fury, and many others. And of course, Ernie Hudson from the movie Ghostbusters. And it's directed by Louis Taig, the same director that gave us The Jewel of the Nile, the sequel to Romancing the Stone and Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen and Michael Bean. The movie begins set in Detroit in 1986. A Japanese homicide investigator named Fuji, played by Nobuyuki Pat Morita, must confront an exophobic populace which holds the Japanese responsible for the dry state of the American automobile industry. By tracking down one of the thieves who have stolen the Japanese turbocharger, but that's when Fuji decided to team up with an obnoxious, wisecracking Detroit police officer named Tom Custis, who's played by Jay Leno, in his first and only starring vehicle. But at first, Fuji was confused by all the bizarre customs that Americans were doing. Doing all these strange languages, you know, riding around, doing a lot of crazy stuff. Meanwhile, Tom and Fuji have been chased down by a couple of bad guys who are going after him, such as exploding houses, car chases, you know, riding around in the motorcycle, which of course Jay Leno wants a button in. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it myself. And all this other you know, stuff that just seems to be recycled from many movies beyond that all these uh, buddy cop movies which makes it to the fact that both Americans and Japanese were both alike in different customs no matter what they think well this was one of those films even for a buddy cop movie where they knew they were trying to do best no matter what they were going for and I guess since this was considered to be one of the earliest of the Rush Hour series I would say that, because this is a pre-Rush Hour movie. There was actually one scene which, believe it or not, Jay Leno's character, Tom, actually handcuffs uh, Fuji on the steering wheel of his car. So that's like, yep, where have I seen that before? Exactly, in the movie Rush Hour. Yeah. <laughs> but then there were a lot of scenes, too, um, that kind of follows it. But at some level... It was nothing special. And I can see why Rush Hour was a much better movie. Because it has all the the acts together. But I could even tell that Leno was not a big fan of this movie. Not to mention the fact that he had to disown it because prior to being in this movie, they also explained that this movie didn't make a lot of money, you know, prior to its last film in the shooting, so that's well that's an interesting concept compared to what was going on. Of course we did know that famous scene at the end of the film where, where of course uh, Leno's character Tom and Marita's character Fuji winds up being chased by Madres. Leno gets shot in the leg in which Paris winds up <laughs> running as fast as he can you know, to Madres who is driving and about to run over them and and develop a high kick straight to Madre's face. Yeah, straight. Yeah, it went landed straight from the car into his face. And yeah, and the car was like moving around back and forth. Yeah, while his leg was caught all the way up there. Yeah, so he managed to stop the car this way. Yes, that scene alone was actually recycled on two shows, by the way, including Leno's uh, The Tonight Show, which, of course, Steve Martin actually did do a bet between, which, believe it or not, back in 2005, Steve Martin was actually doing a, uh, a bet with uh, Jay Leno, you know, picking all, these, picking all these movies at random, mostly Steve Martin movies. So somehow Steve Martin wound up picking one of those clips that that Steve Martin wasn't in, and of course it turned out to be this movie, 
that Jay Leno was in. <laughs> but that scene was also, but that scene, of course, um, the ending scene was also used in the TV show, another late night talk show, of course, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Uh, <laughs> and they managed to put uh, Conan O'Brien's head as a replacement to Chris Sarandon's character. So, <laughs> so this is strange. Yeah. But, um, prior to this, though, it was nothing special. I mean, if you've seen so many buddy cop movies like this, you're not expecting much. But on the other hand, it was worth watching. Especially since Jay Leno was in the film, as opposed to Pat Morita, you know, coming from all the Karate Kid movies. You know, Mr. Miyagi. So I guess he knew that's what he was doing at the time. Yeah. But I could see why you know Leno himself didn't want to be a part of this movie, never alone be in it in the first place. Yeah, you know, coming the fact that he was doing all these uh, Dorito commercials at the time and and doing these uh, substitute host duties for Johnny Carson when he was still hosting the Tonight Show, just before Jay Leno got the job himself. So that was cool. Yeah. But prior to that, though, I liked it. Especially when it was on HBO. You know, I had a copy already, too. If you ever get a chance to see this, especially for those laughable scenes, this would be worth it. But it was cool. So anyway, I'll give Collision Course two and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. My best wishes to Jay Leno. His future will wait. Bye.